2000, we made it to Edmonton. Uh, why are you reading teen magazines? Oh, I'm researching Canada's young voters. According to the latest polls, they think I'm out of touch. Can you believe that? And what about all the junk food? Well, uh, I'm just trying to get really fat. Apparently, the kids are into that these days. I think you mean fat with a PH, not <laughs> fat as in overweight. And anyway, no one says it anymore. Yeah, Alvin, very two years ago. Fat with a PH? Oh! And what about this P dinghy with the schnizzle magizzle whatever? I think I'm going to need a translator. And what's with all these extreme sports? Extremely what? Extremely bad idea. Great idea, Eldon. There's tons of extreme sports going on right here at Edmonton. Don't worry, we'll hook you up. Hook me up? What are you talking about? Just find out what the bajizzle the kids are doing in Edmonton. And if they're going to be my base supporters, they can find out that I will be a super groovy prime minister. You might want to start by not saying super groovy. Bah! Just find out stuff that's big and bold. I want Edmonton to the extreme. You want extreme? We'll give them extreme. Welcome to CG Kids. Canada is full of coast-to-coast -coast excitement, and Kat and I are on a cross-Canada adventure to every capital city in the country. Today, we're in Edmonton, capital of Alberta, gateway to the north and city of champions. We're going to check out Rocky Mountain House, National Historic Site of Canada, to learn about Western Canada's exciting wilderness past. Then, we're going to meet some modern-day adventurers who leap and climb through Edmonton's urban sprawl, Spider-Man style. And we're hitting the slopes to take on Edmonton's newest extreme sport, dirt surfing. Dirt surfing, parkour, and pioneering. It's Edmonton to the extreme. Today, Today on CG Kids. Kids. <laughs> oh yeah! CG Kids! <laughs> What's as big as 110 Canadian football fields and has 23,500 employees, 26 movie theaters, and space for 20,000 cars? The West Edmonton Mall. The West Edmonton Mall has two listings in the Guinness Book of Records. Largest shopping mall in the world and largest car park in the world. We're standing in front of West Edmonton Mall, the largest shopping center in the world. Fitting since Edmonton owes its existence to shopping. In 1795, European fur traders set up the Hudson's Bay Company trading post, Fort Edmonton. It was the most important trading post in the Western fur trade, named after Edmonton, a town near London, England, where the Hudson Bay Company deputy governor owned an estate. But the history of the Edmonton area started way before the Europeans showed up. Around 5,000 years ago, the river valley was home to the Woodland Cree. This vast river valley cuts straight through the heart of the city. It's created by the North Saskatchewan River, slicing the city in two from northeast to southwest. The North Saskatchewan River runs 1,287 kilometers from the Rocky Mountains through Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba before emptying into the Hudson's Bay. It was during the Klondike Gold Rush of 1897 that Edmonton's population really boomed. Edmonton was a popular stop for gold seekers on their way to the Yukon. Many prospectors decided to settle in Edmonton instead of continuing on their journey. A hundred years before that, Fort Edmonton was one of the staging grounds of one of the most extreme surveying expeditions in Canada's history, finding a pass through the massive Rocky Mountains. <laughs> Not far from Edmonton is Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site of Canada. It was in use between 1799 and 1875, and it's located along the North Saskatchewan River, about two hours from Edmonton. 
It was base camp for David Thompson, the most celebrated geographer in Canada's history. David Thompson was the first European to make it through Howe's Pass and find the Columbia River. That was in 1807. We're here to meet Shelley Bird, a Parks Canada interpreter to tell us a bit more about it. Hi Shelly! Hey, We're so excited to be here. We hear you have these really cool activities for us to do. I've got a group of kids inside who are all ready to get started on the Explorer Challenge. All right! Cool. Sid and Kat, this is the grade 7-8 class from Pioneer Middle School. Hi. Hi! So are you guys ready to take part in the David Thompson Explorer Challenge? Yeah! Let's go! to learn what it was like for David Thompson to work both for the Northwest Company and for the Hudson Bay Company. There were two kinds of transportation used, the Canoe de Nord for the Northwest Company and the York Boat for the Hudson Bay Company. The two portages were very different. The canoe could be carried, was light, could be carried and you could run in and out of the trees. The York Boat had to be rolled on trees that were cut down. A wide path cut, rollers made, and the York boat would be pushed along. So we are going to run a race with the Northwest Company Portage first, the Hudson Bay Company Portage second, and we'll see which team wins, Cat or Sid. Cat team! There's been a death. The tump line runner from Sid's team did not make it all the way to the east. Scarlet fever, along with sore throat, high fever, and vomiting. Convulsions and death are quick. This will be either three poles. Lay one teepee pole on the center of the canvas from top to bottom. We're setting up a teepee similar to the big one. And what we need to do is first lay the poles leaving three in reserve. Two for the smoke flaps and one to tie to the canvas in order to help put the canvas up. Okay. The others right. have to go around the door. And remember your door faces east. Now if you can spread the, the canvas out, that's great, Cat. Like this? That's right. Yeah, right. Now, would they have used canvas back then? Or fur, or, or what, what would they use? They were using bison hide to begin with, and when the traders came out here... Like this? Just around one pole. That's right. When the traders came, they brought canvas that they used on the York boats. If you just ran the portage event. And so the canvas became lighter than the bison ropes and made travel much more easier for the women. It was the women's job to build the teepees and the women's job to set them up, and she owned the teepee as well. Very good, now you spread it out. Grant. Here, if you take this other pole, if you grab that one, Jordan, great. Grant, you can go around, there's one on the other side. There you go. You've left room for the smoke to get out with the poles in your smoke flaps. And the next thing that you need to do is to put your stakes in. Overlap the two holes and stake up the front and keep it warm that way. So these are pretty quick to set up, eh? If you're traveling around a lot? Three women could set up a large teepee like that in about 15 minutes. Oh, kids, your bus is here. We'll have to gather you up for today. All right. <laughs> Trip. See you guys! David Thompson was a cartographer, a map maker. And what he did was make the maps so that Europeans that followed him would know how to get here too. 
But without global positioning system, how on earth did he make maps back then? Well, it's a really good question. It just so happens I have this really cool piece oh, of equipment wow. from the fur trade days, similar to the one David Thompson would have used. It's called a sextant because it's shaped like a pizza, one sixth of a circle. And what he would do is use this equipment to look through the telescope and measure the distance of the angle between the horizon and either the sun, moon, star, or planet he was looking at in the sky. And from that angle, he could figure out his latitude, where he was standing. He mapped 3.9 million square kilometers. Holy That's God. almost four million square kilometers. So imagine how many footsteps <laughs> that was. I mean, there were no trains, planes, or automobiles. So it's almost as many as the stars in the sky he was looking at. I mean, it was just incredible. And he must have like loved doing that. He did. And his maps were so accurate that they were used up to 100 years after his death. Today's triviography question. The question is, what is an esker? Here's a hint. It's not an award. And the esker goes to Cat. <laughs> and it's not a fried delicacy. Here's your esker to go, sir. Nothing like fried snails on the run. So what is an esker? We'll tell you later in the show. Nice outfit, Eldon. <laughs> yeah, don't you dig my threads? Daddy, yo, vote for me, careless head honcho. <laughs> See, I'm rapping, I think. Oh, Eldon, I think you should stop trying so hard to be cool. Cool? I am ice cold, okay? I'll have you know that I have been hip and gnarly since the beginning, okay? Look, I got more, check it. <laughs> Don't know much about foreign policy, but I make no homework my priority. Vote for. Oh, oh no, I think uh, I think my alarm clock is ringing here. I wonder if Flavor Flav had that problem. <laughs> Who's that? Well, never mind. Somebody help me turn off my accessories. The largest duck-billed dinosaur, the Edmontosaurus, is believed to have existed more than 50 million years ago. It was discovered in the late 1990s along the North Saskatchewan River Bank. We're in Edmonton, the capital of Alberta. In a few minutes, we're gonna hook up with Derek and Connor and learn all about parkour. Ooh, I have a feeling this is them. Hey guys. Are you guys Derek and Connor? Hi there. Yeah. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to see you guys. Nice to meet you. So Connor, what is parkour? Well, parkour is being able to move quickly and smoothly in any environment. So are we parkouring right now? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, it's got to be more than just that, though. Well, sure. But why don't we show you? Actually, speak louder than words. All right. Awesome. It looks like so much fun. But we've never done this before. These guys have been doing it for years. So we're going to take all the necessary safety precautions. So I heard that parkour came from French military training. Is that true? Uh, well, the name came from there. But the actual idea was created by David Bell. And it was to be able to be free in your environment, move around, and to never be trapped. So is this always done in an urban setting, like in parks and stuff? Not necessarily. It can be done uh, in a forest or, or anywhere where there's obstacles to be passed. OK, wait, what was that? <laughs> well, that's the vault. Just come up, you put your first hand on, and then you're swinging your legs up, right? We'll lift your body up, and then switch hands. Wow. You just have to, there you go, yeah. <laughs> you want to come into it, go out of it, keep on flowing, keep on moving. Go outside and play. 
computers and video games are good, but you can't let them take up all your time. You just want to be really, really active. So you get strong, flexible, you have a lot of ability to do um, anything you want to do. You guys have to be in really good shape for this stuff. Yeah, do you train at a gym or like how do you get involved in this? The best way to get involved is definitely to find experienced people to help you out and teach you the uh, basics. Yep, but if you can find a gym to start in, that's a great place. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us. Thanks a us. lot, guys. Thank you. It's been awesome. The term parkour comes from parkour de combattant, the obstacle courses of the French military. I suppose you two think you're pretty cool with that parking thing. Yeah, well, I've decided to do some extreme sports too. Really? Yes. The young Canadian voters really like rollerblading. So check this out. Where did you get those? How old are those skates? Skates? Those are skates? I happen to be a pretty hip dude. Dude, and these are my roller skates, smarty pants. I remember when I got them. Oh, those were the days. I am one hip dude, Dario. Watch this. Yeah. Oh. And I still got it. I'm still hip. Oh, oh, oh. Ouch, my hip. You've still got it all right. Do you, do you think he's okay? Oh yeah, he's Elden. This is Edmonton's River Valley, where the early settlement of Fort Edmonton was built along its upper banks. It was formed 20,000 years ago by post-glacial erosion, and it was further eroded by the river. The valley is 60 meters deep, and varies in width between 1 and 1.6 kilometers. In 1915, it was set aside for recreation. Now, the River Valley system has 22 parks and over 100 kilometers of trails. Making it the longest stretch of urban park in North America. So what are we doing here? Check it out. You must be Katie. Yes, I am. I'm Sid. Hi. I'm Kat. Hi. Hi. So we're here to learn about this extreme sport we've been hearing about. It. Is this a bike or a board or what, what is this? It's called a dirt surfer. Well, it looks so cool. We have to try this. Yeah, I have gear for you guys. You guys should try it out. We All right. So Katie, where did board surfing start? It started in Australia at Perth, actually. So why would they need another sport in Perth? Don't they already like snowboard and ski and surf there? Uh, actually, no, there aren't mountains for thousands of kilometers without any snow. And the beaches weren't good enough conditions for <laughs> surfing. So they decided to develop a new board sport. Great. And do you like do com get competitions with this sport? Uh, yeah, they do competitions all over Canada, actually. Road competitions, slalom competitions air competitions. So is it really hard to learn or did you pick it up quick? Um, I picked it up quite quickly because I snowboard. So, but it's really easy. But little kids come out and they can do it right away. So even Sid can learn how to do it? Yes. <laughs> When you're riding down, you're going to want to keep your stance really, really square. Okay. You're not going to want to lean to the side, because then you fall that way, or lean this way, you're going to fall backwards. Okay. okay. Lean a little bit forward, so you don't, like, fall over backwards. Okay. And just look ahead, don't look to the sides, or else you'll <laughs> go to the sides. Um, and that's it, just keep your balance as much as you can. All right. And what you're going to do is, you, when you start, you're going to push with your front foot, 
okay. probably once, and then just slide it in. Good job. <laughs> there you go. Oh! <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Oh no! <laughs> All right, Katie. It's not as easy as it looks. Can you get us going? Awesome. It's time to answer today's triviography question. Today's question is, what is an esker? An esker is a long, narrow ridge of gravel deposited by a stream in or under a decaying glacial ice sheet. They can be found all along the Edmonton River Valley. CG Kids is on the World Wide Web. Visit us and find out even more about our incredible country. Just click on our website to find games, contests, and way more about our show. You can even try the CG Kids Atlas online. Check it out. Hey, Eldon, Edmonton was a great city to visit. We went dirt surfing and explored the city while doing parkour. Yeah, we learned about the city's amazing past at the Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site of Canada. Eldon, are you paying attention? Yeah, yes, of course, of course, of course, but I'm uh, just running a little bit late. Late for what? An extreme sport? Yes, yes, as a matter of fact. One that would make my young voters very impressed. Which one? Uh, um, uh, it's, uh, um... Alden, is that a deck of cards in your hand? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is, and that's what I'm doing, extreme magic tricks. Really? Mm-hmm. You see, uh, well, ah, fine. I'm late for my bridge game. Are you happy now? Yes, I play bridge and I'm old. Okay, but I'm still cool, so vote for Elden. Peace out. <laughs>